here's the thing. I don't ask questions. I've learned not to ask questions because sometimes when you ask too many questions, you're stuck with a weirdo for a lot of hours. You have a six hour tattoo and you ask the wrong question in hour one. Now you got five hours just thinking like, Shit, this guy's a Nazi. Do you have a crazy client story? I have so many crazy client stories. Crazy client story? Yeah. You guys ask this all the time. <laughs> when I was first starting, I had a really creepy client and I did not like him because he kept touching my leg and I told him to stop touching my leg, but he wouldn't stop. The important thing about this man, other than his creepy, creepy wandering hands, uh, was his nipples. I mean, I had a woman travel in for, she was gonna be in New York for a month and she, we did a whole back piece in a month. Uh, she was a very nice lady, <laughs> but I still think that that was a crazy idea. But I'm crazy too for saying yeah, you know? That's not usually a thing that you can say about people, I think, is uh, let me tell you about their nipples. But this guy had some whoppers on him. I started tattooing, I would tattoo anything that would walk in. And these two, this this couple walks in, and they want a matching tattoo of their daughter's name. And I have these guys spell the name. They spell it out for me. They do everything nice. I make sure it's it's a really weird name, so I'm I, I double check it with them. I'm like, listen, is this spell right? And they're like, yeah, hundred percent. I was tattooing his like peck into his shoulder area. So there was a reason for me to be uh, near his nipplege. So I tattooed his name, came out okay on both of them. And then the next day they call me and they're like, hey, listen, the name's misspelled. I was like, what, what do you mean? She's like, yeah, no, I went to my grandmother. My grandmother told me we misspelled the names. So they both wanted us to change it. There's no way to change it, man. These guys are idiots. They didn't know how to spell their own daughter's name. He had them pierced and they were stretched to, I, I've got to say like a double zero. Um, I remember thinking I could definitely get my pinky through there. And then I had the thought that I'm thinking about which of my fingers could fit in this man's nipple. And then I had the thought about well, at least he doesn't lactate. I had a client, I was tattooing him, and he pulls out a pack of cigarettes as I'm uh, tattooing his back. And as I'm about to say, hey, you can't smoke in here, he just throws a cigarette in his mouth and started eating it. I was boozing with my buddy Jimmy Calkins, and he does a lot of di lines and dot stuff. And so this one chick, she's like, I want to do this Lotus thing. And I'm like, all right, cool. So, you know, put the stencil on her. You know, trying to stay upbeat, trying to stay upbeat. Then I start tattooing, and then it isn't long before she's like this. I had a client of mine, it was his second session, super sweet guy, but I think he was off on something because all of a sudden our shop assistant started finding bottles of alcohol being hidden on sofa pillows and our patio furniture and my clients start smelling more and more like booze. And I'm like, honey, you all right out there? You know, like, you seem like there might be something wrong going on. I'm just, I'm really tired. I, my doctor changed my medication or something, you know? I'm like, okay, this seems like junkie talk, but whatever, let's get this tattoo done, right? He's also at the same time calling his girlfriend every 15 minutes and going like, babe, I love you, and you can hear her through the phone going, I'm at work, stop calling me at work. Now her younger boyfriend, he's like 20 years her junior, he comes up, sees how f she is, so he's like, I need 80 more bucks, babe. I'm like, are you f***ing kidding me? What's going on here? So now I'm like, dude, so now like, I'm watching this this chick get hustled while she's like in my chair. She can't keep her head up. Fucking, I'm like, oh, this is the worst. And he goes, yeah, Kalanikin will do that to you. And I'm like, mother It just went into a complete nightmare. The, 
the, oh God, he tried to jump from my balcony. We had to save him. He picked a fight with uh, the lobby personnel. Like, I, yeah, he, he, I don't even think I want to like tell the whole story because now I'm like remembering parts of it that make me even go even like, Ugh, maybe I'm just going to skip it. <laughs> so now I got to finish the rest of the tattoo and I hate liars. So now I got to finish the rest of the tattoo like, Oh my, you had a lot of me. We could have been friends. You didn't have a lot of me. I tattooed so many places. Like I've been on, uh, on tour with artists. I've been tattooing like big million dollar mansions and like been on private jets. I, I was doing uh, tattoos on a tour bus once for this, this big music festival. I was really getting ahead in it. And then out of nowhere, you know, the tour manager's like, we gotta go, we gotta go. And I was doing like a face. How, how was that? How was tattooing on a plane? That seems awful. You'd be a little sway. You usually just sway with it. It's like tattooing. I tattooed on boats and that's fine. So, but I, I would suggest having the private jet like not on the air. But you've tattooed on boats? Like, yeah. It seems like it would be, do you just, do you get used to it eventually? Like, how does that work? Um, I just start moving. I'm tattooing in a moving bus. It's like bouncing and my, I'm like trying to hold my inks. And then this guy's like, no, keep going, keep going. I was like, no, you crazy bastard. Hang on a second. Like more so like if it's like a big motion, like it doesn't really affect minor motions, you know? Um, it's more so if it's like more like weird, like abrupt motions like this, you know? Yeah. He really wanted me to keep going. I was like, this is crazy. And the ink was flying and shit. people, I was like, ah! Post Malone, so I tattooed him. Um, I've been tattooing him, but I, the first time I ever tattooed him, he brought me to uh, the studios while he was recording with, with Kanye and all that. And uh, we were all getting lit pretty much. Um, and I brought my tattoo stuff and he's like, bro, I want to get, um, you know, whatever and never mind for for Kurt Cobain for for Nirvana big Nirvana fan and uh I'm just stoked that I'm sitting there you know in the studio with Post Malone I'm a huge fan so I'm tattooing you know the word whatever and we're all partying and I'm you know I'm almost done I, I cross the A and take a picture take a picture with him go home and the next day I look at the picture and I realize that I crossed the V in whatever and I'm like oh man like he is gonna shoot me he's gonna kill me you know and so the next day i was just like worried and telling my clients like oh, i tattoo posty and i fucked up his tattoo and he get i get a call he's like yo are you gonna pull up today i'm like uh yeah sure and as i pull up i'm you know scared he's gonna yell at me and and he looks at me he's like bro i really love how you took your artistic you know freedom to cross that cross that v man that was really cool of you and then I tattooed Nevermind on the, on the other hand, and his buddy, Bobby Greenleaf, was like, I want the same whatever tattoo, cross the V and all that. I'm like, all right, man. <laughs> so, you know, Posty, <laughs> sorry, man, but uh, <laughs> that was an accident. There was just something a little off about her. I wasn't sure if she was drunk or not, so it was, it was already caught me on the back foot. She was a little bit peculiar. And she was like, excuse, excuse me, love. do you do tattoo removal? And I was like, no, no, we don't. It's, it was very new then as well. You definitely do, don't do removal. It's like, no, we don't do removal. I was like, what? just out of interest, what is it you want done? And she went, oh, my eyebrows. And it just hadn't registered. And I looked and she had one really thick eyebrow that was too high. And one that was just almost just a bit of a pen line that was lower. So she looked like she was doing this. And they were purple. We were having a great time. And then all of a sudden, I noticed his speech started getting impaired. And... He started moving a little bit. I said, hey, are you okay? What's going on? I mean, because he started acting really weird. And within a matter of a few seconds, he literally fell onto the ground, rolling on the ground on his stomach. And he's looking at me going, no, just keep tattooing me. Let's do whatever you do, just keep tattooing me because this is a great time to do this. When I'm out, get me. And I'm like, I can't do this. She went, oh, my friend bought a machine and I let him have a go. I went, on your face? Why purple? She went, it's the only color he had. So you let him practice on your face? I saw a pastor about three years later and they were still there. She'd not had him removed. So I don't know if she'd been to see them and they'd said, it's gonna hurt. And she was just like, no. But she constantly looked like that. 
and it was just <laughs> it was it's sad but it was kind of hilarious at the same time you just think i hope you were drunk when you did it as well i'm assuming it's a kind of a constant way of being for you but yeah i'd say that was that's the one that always sticks out in my head anyway. I, I was hoping for a happy ending there <laughs>